And we are back. This is Supergirl Season 5, Episode 3. This season is amazing so far. Obviously, the whole thing with Kara and Lena is the highlight for me so far. And judging by the synopsis for, I think it's this episode, might be next week, but I'm pretty sure it's this episode, Kara and Lena are gonna have, like, a talk or something, because the synopsis says Kara tries to mend her relationship with her, so... That should be interesting. Hopefully it's not emotional like the season premiere, because that shit was emotional. Hell, the entire season's probably gonna be emotional, but, you know, I'm used to this show and all the other Arrowverse shows fuck with my emotions, so... Uh, yeah, I'll, um, I'll just prepare myself for any potential heartbreak that comes my way. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Gross, gross, I hate spiders. Oh, that's gross. Ew! Oh, God. Already, at the beginning of the episode, fucking ew. Why do I feel like Hope could be our new big bad for the season? She's an AI in a body of her own. What if she's like Ultron? She I'm rebels sorry, to do what it she thinks be is best. Comfortable with me. Show me some sparkly death. Sam Carr. Um, oh. Dr. Niles Jarrett, a health tech billionaire recently discovered deceased in a nightclub bathroom. My God, Dr. Jarrett died? I, I interviewed him last year for your piece on the moral implications of chain manipulation. Knowing the dead person does not make their death interesting. Next. Wait, wait. Okay. <laughs> a 33-year-old genius doing significant work in the field of extending life dies young, unexpectedly. It's tragic. And certainly worth a story. It's hard news, legitimate feature, or brain candy. Sentimental tripe you just pitched us a category of its own. Trash. How dare you? Well, he was right. A dead scientist is not sparkly. <sighs> and there's no substantive story. So stop wasting our time. Oh, you know will you shut up? We haven't even looked into it yet. I've looked into it thoroughly. Thoroughly. Nothing there. Franklin, next corpse, please. Can everyone at CatCo except Kara and Nia just shut up? Oh, fuck. Oh, this bitch. Greenwex's voice takes the mystery away. Oh no, Lena. She's gonna use Kara to get the journals. I would be able to cure myself of the trauma. Well, then that's what you have to do. Unfortunately, that is not an option. The government has confiscated all of Lex's possessions, his technologies, his weapons, even his childhood journals. Well, that's ridiculous. You're the only person that could have an interest in that. Can't you just ask for them back? Believe me, I have tried, but it is all tied up in bureaucracy and red tape. My lawyer said I would never get them out of Fort Summit. Well, I could get them for you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> God, it would be ridiculous. The journals will help you heal, and they are only locked up due to a technicality. I could go and get them, and no one would ever know. No, I couldn't ask you to do that. You're not asking. I'm... I'm Shit. Cannot connect to the hive mind. He can't do it. <laughs> What's wrong with you? He can't do anything. <laughs> That's why he betrayed them. Because he couldn't connect to everyone growing up, so they all like started shunning him. And as a result, it made him feel like they didn't care about him, like they betrayed him. I love you. Yeah, they did it because they thought they were protecting him, but in his eyes, he saw it as a betrayal. So in turn, he betrayed them. I don't think I invited you here. Oh, this bitch. I invited myself. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, fuck. Nope. I'd be like, nope, I don't do webs. Yeah. Oh, oh cool. Oh, fuck. I hate spiders. Damn, that's a bitch. No, no! Not face. Oh, God, is he infected now? Father, you did the best you could for Mel. It's not your fault. He was my boy. My child. He could not control his illness. The test was mine and I failed. I do not deserve to live. Oh. And how can I continue to counsel our people? When 
by myself. I'm nothing. Walter, how do people need you? I need you. This is sad. This storyline just got interesting, though. Everyone. memories not his father they all thought his father did it but John did it that's why his brother wants revenge really starting to bug me same if she spews out any more spiders oh okay please just thank you in her webs. Oh, please tell me this will work. No more spiders? We have our own spider sucker. I love it. Who do you work for? Who do you work for? Whoa! What the fuck was that? She's dead. What just killed her? Yeah! It was like a fucking shadow or something. Oh, no, no, no. John, John, John! with you, but now you tell me you don't want that. I can only operate at 100%. That's just how I'm built, which is entirely my problem, and not yours. Oh, Brainy. Well, good luck. Where the fuck is that? And what is that? I mean, I know it's a newspaper, but what's on it? Oh, is that money? Oh, fuck. Money. Now I know what I have to do. No, Lena. Hmm. Mind control's not the answer. Okay, that was a really good episode. I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't really all that interested in the storyline with John's brother. Like, it seemed interesting, it's just it wasn't really like my favorite kind of storyline. Seemed kind of just meh, but honestly, this episode kind of made me interested. Because 
I didn't expect that to be the reason why he wants revenge. Like, I can see the father erasing the memories, but the fact that the truth is it was John that did it, and that's why he wants revenge, that makes it a little more interesting. So, I guess I'm still not 100% in on it, but after this episode, I'm kind of interested in the storyline to see where it goes. I kind of like the... They haven't really done much filler so far. Like, the first three episodes have all focused on his brother. Even though there has been a little bit, like... Like, each episode so far has had a villain of the week. But they also have had a balance between a villain of the week and then the main storyline. I kind of like how they balance that out. Like, see, that's my that's my main problem with The Flash sometimes. Is that sometimes they dedicate a whole episode to a villain of the week. And it gets kind of repetitive and boring after a while. But Supergirl this season, honestly, I like how they balance it out. Like, a little, like... Some of the episode is Villain of the Week, some is the main story, and I kind of like it. It's really- I like how they're doing it, so it makes it a lot more interesting to me. <sighs> Obviously, the parts with Lena and Carr are still the most interesting, because I love Lena, she's my favorite character on the show. Um, I personally, even though I do- I stand by my statement that the big bad is the person who runs Leviathan, who I'm assuming we'll find out by the end of the first half of the season, I think this is a possibility, hope might turn out to be the big bad because I think they're going to pull an Ultron where there's an AI, an artificial intelligence that gets their own body but eventually they start rebelling and do what they think is best for humanity even if it has so much consequences like it results in a lot of death but they don't they don't care because they think it's what's best for humanity. I think that's what they're going to do. I don't I they might not but I could see Hope pulling an Ultron and rebelling and doing what she thinks is good for humanity and eventually turning against Lena and everyone else. I could see it. And she could possibly do it while still in Eve's body. I hope it doesn't kill Eve though, because I like Eve. And that could possibly be what um turns Lena against turn like ugh, like stops Lena from doing this technology stuff, like mind control. Cause Lena's not bad, she's just she's hurt and she's She's feeling hurt and she's all have all this betrayal, but it's not just because of Kara, it's because she's faced it her whole life and with her brother, too. So, but hopefully, if this does happen and Hope pulls Noltron, it'll be what makes Lena know that this is not the way. Like, yeah, I get it, she's hurt and she feels betrayed, and I understand it's just this is not the way. Like, helping humanity is fine, but like, she has good intentions. It's her methods of going about it that are what make her antagonistic. I don't see her becoming a full-on villain. Maybe a little a bit of an antagonist, but not a full-on villain. I as a, I like Dark Lena, but I don't want her to be a full-on villain, though. Because I like her and Kara's dynamic is one of my favorites in the show, so I don't want them to ruin that. But this season is a fight for Lena's soul, as been described, so... I'm hoping by the end of the season, they... Not mend it, but... They take the first step to mending Carr and Lena's relationship. I just want them to be okay. Because if the rest of the season is emotional as the first episode, because the first episode, that was fucking emotional. Then I'm gonna die. Well, I'm gonna die anyway, because of Crisis. <laughs> so that's gonna be fun. No, not really. Well, anyway, that is it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. That was Supergirl Season 5, Episode 3. Overall, really good episode. Really enjoying the season so far. <sighs> I really want to know who the damn big bad is. Right now they're making it look like it's Malefic. I don't think it is. I think he's more of like a secondary antagonist. The big bad is either the person who runs Leviathan, who I think is the overall main villain. But I still stand by my theory, it could be Hope. Hope could pen potentially pull an Ultron. But until that happens, my sets on the big bad are whoever runs Leviathan. Who I'm assuming will meet by hopefully the end of the first half before Crisis. If not, then beginning of the second half. Because we gotta find out. <laughs> but anyway, that is it for now. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in this episode and what your theories are on for the who the big bad is. Do you think Hope could be the big bad? Do you think she'll pull an Ultron? Do you think it's someone else? And I will see you guys next time.